York Day. Church. Today is Sunday, May the 28th, and these are your weekly announcements. Today, Abundant Love Fellowship Church will be the special guest at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church for their pastor and wife anniversary at 3 p.m. Next Sunday, June the 4th, is Sneaker Sunday, so come kick it with us for morning worship. Member partners, invite your friends and family to come worship with us in their favorite pair of kicks. Parents or guardians of any youth ages 6 and up that are interested in participating in the Youth Mind presentation, please see one of the youth workers after service. New members orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and via Zoom link. Please contact Minister Paula Smith for details. 
Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live. So join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candace Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can sow your tithes and offering via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button. Or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via our Cash App to ALF Offering. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. I have a special announcement here from Pastor. Um, there will be a brief meeting with all member partners immediately following the service. Okay. Amen. 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 All right. Everyone have a envelope. Amen. I just want to start with this scripture, Colossians 3 and 7. One of my favorites. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever you have, do it. We're going to do it as unto Him. We're going to give unto Him. Amen. Not give it again, but we know that when you plant a seed, amen, you can expect a harvest. Amen. Praise God. So we're just excited about this form of worship. This is another time of worship as we give unto the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that are given, the ones that desire but may not have it. But God, whatever we have, we are doing it we're giving our best seed this year. We're giving our best. We're not giving it for man. We're giving it to you. Because we want to hear you say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant has been faithful over a few things. So Father, we thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen.
the speaker of the hour. I've known this young lady um, since the time we've been here, about seven years. And I've had conversation with her. And I've always felt like this young lady is wise beyond the years. Three things that I learned about Minister Gill. One, she loves her family. Amen. Number two, she loves her church and her pastor. But three, and most of all, she loves her God. Amen. And if you would listen and have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through her this morning, you will receive. Amen? Amen. So let's stand all over the building. The ministry of Minister Jamaica. is sufficient 
freely. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ's sin, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. For when I am weak, yes. then I am strong. Amen. My subject today, for those taking notes and for those who just are curious, your weakness does not hinder his power. Yes. You may be seated. How many of you have run into an arrogant person? But you can't tell a private individual that they want all the credit and all the reward to themselves. And don't let stuff go good in their life. Then they don't need, they don't see a need for prayer anymore. They say stuff like, oh, I got my need. I don't got to pray all the time. And I see y'all out there praying with me, nodding your head, saying amen. But how many of you would say amen to the fact that that may have been you too? At what point in your life? It's easy to look at somebody else and say, they got to get rid of that pride or else their destruction going to come. That's in the Bible, y'all. It's Proverbs 16, 18. But yeah, that's how they say it. Their destruction going to come soon. But what did you say when it was you? Mm. That thought you could handle that situation better than God? Mm. When it was you that stopped praying once you got your blessing? Mm. Treating God like a fast food restaurant. Mm. Putting in your order, getting your food, and leaving. Mm. Only to come back when you're hungry again. Right. What did you say when it was you? Look at your neighbor and say, get over yourself. And get under God. In the text, verse 7 to be specific, the word conceited, translated into Greek, means to lift or to raise over, to uplift oneself. Now tell me this. If I'm able to lift myself up, what is the real need for God in my life? Mm -hmm. Now we can kind of see why the form was necessary, but for those that need a little more help, Paul, the author of this book, is the same Paul that wrote most of the New Testament books. He's the same Paul that started over a dozen churches, the same Paul that traveled all over spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Paul had a reason to brag on himself and all of the accomplishments and accolades that were given in his ministry thus far. And he resisted the urge to boast on those things. Yeah. Let me give you a little background about Paul and the Corinthians. See, so Paul started the church in Corinth, right? But he didn't stay with them. You know, he had to go and start other churches. So while he was gone, there were some rumors being spread that he was a false apostle. And he didn't love them like he said he did. I mean, the Corinthians were coming to get him and his ministry at this point. When Paul got word of the situation, he decided to visit and to write them to reconcile. And with most of the Corinthians, he actually did. But to the remaining who were convinced he was a fraud, to those who were still pressed, Paul decided to write another letter to challenge them. Mm -hmm. That's where we go to chapter 12. Mm -hmm. He referred to them as super apostles because they claimed to be better qualified than Paul. Mm -hmm. Now you can see why this will put Paul in a place of boasting about himself. Because Paul is like, anything you can do, I can do better. Mm -hmm. 
If we really look at the life of Paul, though, he had a history of being arrogant. Back when he was known as Saul. You see, Saul was a bad man back then. You couldn't tell him nothing. His beliefs were so strong against Christians that he persecuted families and all who believed in the good news about Jesus Christ in an attempt to stop the spread of the gospel. But not only that, Saul was a Pharisee that was very well aware of where he came from and very proud of it. And that's who he was. And that arrogance is still in him, even now. This reminds me of the saying, you can take the person out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the person. How many of us still got some hood in the water? See, I don't fight no more, but you mess with the wrong one, and the right one gonna rise up in me. You mess with my son, and you're gonna get the right one to rise up in me. You mess with my family, and you're gonna get the right one to rise up in me. And take care And Pastor, I just I want you to make a note of all the aliens. We've got to pray for them after church. Amen. <laughs> but going back to Paul, <laughs> in dealing with the super apostles, he had to resist something that was rising up that was already in him. Mm-hmm. When he talks about the thorn in the flesh, it brought me to wonder when Paul actually received this thorn. Was it pre-Paul, whose name was Saul, or was it present Paul? What if the thorn was given to Saul by the enemy to control him so that he would not be exalted above measure? Because even Satan knew he had an issue with arrogance. What thorn was in your flesh that the devil used to control you? Let me ask the question a different way, because Paul also explained that the thorn was a messenger of Satan to harass me, or buffet me, in other versions. And that word buffet means to strike with fists. Tussle. What is the enemy striking you for? Nobody likes control. Nobody likes the thorn. And just like Paul, how many times have you asked God to take it Away. Scripture says three times Paul pleaded that God would take away the storm. Every time you're in pain, you look to relieve it, right? Some people relieve their pain with medicine. Some people relieve their pain with drugs and alcohol. Some people relieve their pain with the pleasures of this life. Pain is no joke. Especially to the one who feels it the most. Pain will shake you to your core. But there is some pain that medicine won't heal. Some pain that drugs won't work either. You can call on Jesus when you're broke down. You can call on Jesus when your back is against the wall. You can call on Jesus when your heart is broken. You can call on Jesus in your weakness. You can call on the name of the living God for your relief. Just like Paul did. He called on God to take away the pain of the thorn. And Jesus' answer is the answer we need for the thorns in our flesh. He will show up and he will answer. But what happens? When he answers your request, just not in the way you thought he should. Uh You ask God for a job, but he ends up showing you a job fair happening around the corner from your house. You ask God for a husband, he ends up preparing you to be wise instead of delivering a package to your door labeled husband. And I know some singles going to be upset, but God does not Amazon prime your spouse. I know. I mean, it would be much easier that way, right? I think do it like that. God has a history of answering in ways that we can't even wrap our heads around sometimes. And in this case, Paul was the recipient of one of those abnormal answers. He says, I pleaded with the Lord three times 
And it goes on to say, but he said to me. Yes. Let's pause right here. Because I believe some of you need to know that God will speak to you, even in your weakness. Yeah. God will speak to you, even in the thorn that's not removed. Yes. Yeah. It makes no difference your current state. God will speak to you. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. What happens when you plead to God and the answer is not what you expect? A failed expectation is bound to happen because of what God has told us before. He said that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So don't ever put an expectation on his answer. But just receive what he said. But sometimes what we expect is not what we need anymore. He says my grace is sufficient for you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is saying that I know this strikes you. And I know Satan is trying to control you. But I don't have to put a thorn in you to control you. My grace is enough for you to do what I called you to do. But also, in this one answer, God was telling him that he has gifted him with favor in spite of the thorn. Jesus continues to tell Paul that his power is made perfect in weakness. Now, perfect here means to bring to an end. God is saying his power brings to an end weakness. This is what God told Paul, but please understand this was not specific to just Paul. It's a statement of reality. That God would bring to an end any weakness yeah. found in us. Yeah. How many of you can say amen to the fact that when I'm weak, God will bring it to an end? Yeah. 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 So I'm not going to remove the thorn. But I'll bring you enough favor to bring your weakness yeah. to an end. Yeah. Yeah. And when we respond, our response should be like Paul's response. When we're facing weakness, in our life. When we're facing weakness in our flesh, our response should be like Paul's. Mm-hmm. Because once you get the revelation, it doesn't matter how great the weakness is. His power in our life works to bring to an end our weakness. Uh-huh. Paul said, I will boast all the more blame. Mm. When we boast about something, we see it as something we're proud of. Yeah. Something we're happy about. Mm-hmm. Something we can triumph over. And this is the way Paul began to feel about his weaknesses. Mm. And some people may ask, why should we be happy about this? Mm. Why should we triumph over our weaknesses like Paul? Because the happiness will not be about the weakness, Mm. but about Christ's power. Paul says, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Me. Mm-hmm. Rest means more than just God's presence in the yes. text. Right. It means descending upon, mm-hmm. working with him, mm-hmm. and giving him. Yes. Paul was able to change his mindset based off of Christ's power. He believed that if he lifted up his weakness yes. in any situation, that Christ's power would not only descend on him, but work within him. Overcome. And even the relationship Paul had with God, that makes it even better. Yeah. Have you ever felt like because of your imperfection, you sabotaged your relationship with God? Yeah. Have you felt like you lacked value and substance all because of how you lacked the strength to push through? Or you failed in an area in your life and now you feel like God won't rest on you until you get back right. Yeah. I'm here to call the devil a lie to his face because the text shows us that our weaknesses do not have the power to jeopardize our relationship with God. Yeah. Scripture says, who can separate us from the love of God? Yeah. And in short, what I believe the writer was saying is that nothing has that much power. Yeah. But Paul, 
He had a shift in his mind. And he chose to see his weaknesses differently. Yeah. Paul stopped seeing his weaknesses as a hindrance yeah. to God. But as an opportunity right. for God. Yeah. Yeah. Touch your neighbor and say, shift it. Yeah. You have got to shift it from thinking about only your weakness yeah. to thinking about God's power over your life. Yeah. Touch your other neighbor and say, shift it. I don't know how dare you yeah. to think about your weaknesses differently because now you that when weakness it presents itself, God also presents his opportunity yeah. to bring it to an end. Yeah. Your, with your weak self. <laughs> and here comes God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. With your broken self. Yeah. And here comes God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. With your head held down. And here comes God. You must know that there is opportunity yeah. for God's power in your weakness. Uh -huh. There is opportunity in the insults, mm -hmm. calamity, yeah. and those moments when life gets home. That was an opportunity for God when you wrecked your car but you still had your life. Wow. It's an opportunity for God to help you when that relationship ended and now you wonder why you can still hold your peace. Yeah. It's an opportunity for God when you struggle raising your kids. But they still turned out just fine. Right. And you may ask, Minister dear, how can I change my mind about weaknesses? I want God's power. I need His strength. But this is just too hard for me. I know. And I get it. It's a lot of pressure on me. It's a lot of people counting on me. Looking at me. Even inspired by it. But here you are with your weakness. And the enemy's trying to convince you that God can't use you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. When I was 16, I had a weakness. And it resulted in me becoming a teen mom. During that time, I left the church. I stopped singing. I ran away from my relationship with God. Because I felt like, at the time, he don't, yeah, it's, I'm good. We, yeah, I messed up. Big time. God ain't gonna want nothing to do with me. And everybody knew it too. I gave myself over to my hands, my vices, my failures. I became them, so to speak. And as I get ready to close, one day, God showed me that my weaknesses were His opportunity in my life yes. to bring. My weaknesses, my issues, even the insults that came against me, to an end. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say your weaknesses, your weaknesses. Don't, hinder don't hinder his power. His power. It's all right. You've been beaten. You've been talked about. You've been broken. Money is funny. You don't know your purpose. The, the people that you love seem like they're moving further and further away from God. Your kids are struggling with mental health issues. You struggle too. You lost someone you love deeply. You've been waiting on God for a blessing and it ain't came through. Yet. Friends left you. Spouse left you. Boo left you. Everyone left you. And now it's just you. Crying. Now it's just you. With your head down. Now it's just you. With your own thoughts and your own thorns. 
wondering when this will all end. Wondering why God and gave up on you. And my, my charge today was to tell you that it's because God's grace and His power is not hindered by your weakness. His grace and His power is not hindered by your fault. His grace and His power is not hindered by your broken pieces. And there are some of you who feel like you're too broken. You're too far off, too far gone. And it's too late to catch up now. And as our ministers come, God is saying, that I still want you. God is saying that I see you. God is saying that I know. I know you're broken. I know you're down bad. I know you're heavy. And I know that you're weak. But I still want you. You want you. I want a relationship with you. I want to show you who I really am and what I can be in your life. And if that's you that's here, and if that's you that's online, if it's online, just go ahead and tap that's me. I want to give my, my life to God. I want that relationship with him. Go ahead and put that in the chat. If you're here, please come. The ministers are placed here to help you lead you into that relationship with God. And for those of you I want to pray. Father God, first and foremost, we thank you. We thank you for looking past our faults and seeing our needs. Father God, the person listening to this prayer would want a relationship with you. They're opening themselves up to believe that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. To believe that they were washed away with his blood. And to believe that you are Lord and Savior. And so God, I'm praying, God, that as they go forward in their belief, God, that you would save them, wrap them in your loving arms, and bring them closer to you. And if you agree with this prayer, all of God's children say, if you agree with me, you say that again. Congratulations. You and that man you are a part of the kingdom. And now you get to experience the fullness of God. The next call is for those with weakness. Those with a thorn that have truly struggled. And you feel like you can't, I can't see a way out of this. It hurts too bad, I can't even move no more. I want to get closer. I want God to bless me and heal me and relieve me, but I just can't seem to pick myself up. Today is the day. If that's you and you're in the building, you can come forward and you can get some prayer. 
If you need prayer for anything else that's going on in your life, you can come forward and you can get some prayer. These ministers are here. They are not God. Please don't get it twisted. But guess what? They know. And they can help you. They can lead you to the one. Thank you. 
Christ. And the recommendation is abundant love for the church. And if you're here today and you say, you know what, I'm going to accept that recommendation. And you want to join the church today. You can go ahead and get up. And you can make your way forward. We're ready for love on you and broke with you. If you're here today and you want to join the church, you want to become a member of Christ, now's the time. If you're watching online and you say, you know what, Lisa? Yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. I want to be a partner. I want to be a member of partner too. Go ahead, let us know in the chat. And somebody's going to reach out to you. And guess what? We're going to love on you too. And I'm going to just allow a little bit of time for those who still need prayer and for those who want to join the church. I think it's a beautiful thing to have a church family so ready to love our new members. Especially this church family.
Jesus, we pray. Amen.